Hello everyone, I'm Krishan Veer. I'm developer evangelist with Cisco DevNet and I focus on Cisco security technologies. I have with me Jared Smith from Security BU and Jared is actually going to talk about our new APIs which is available on NGFW. Um, those APIs got released in 6.2.3 version and um, he's going to show us how easy it is to create objects using um, the API Explorer, a tool which is bundled along with the uh, uh, NGFW, and um, using a simple Python script. So, Excellent. Thank, thank you, Veer. So what, what I'll do, and, and I'm, I'm architect on Firepower Device Manager and Firepower Threat Defense API, so this is kind of near and dear to things I care about here. So what, what we will show you, like, like Veer said, is how to create an object, and we'll go through two different ways that you can do that. One of the ways is with the API Explorer, which is built into our, our product, and I'll show you how to get into that. And the other method is using Python and scripting to, to start programming against the API and, and creating an object. And for context, we do have another video that gets into the details of session management and things like that. So we're gonna ab abbreviate that just to not be redundant, and we'll get into the, the flow to create objects. So the next thing I'll do here is I'll show you some of the tools that you need to, to run this. So one of the things is, is the API Explorer here, which, which it comes with the product. So if, if you have an FTD or NGFW device, you can point your browser at that and access that. And I'll show you that in a moment. Another thing is you want Python, and, and I gave you the python.org URL here. And if you want interactive Python, there's a tool called IPython which I really like. It's an interactive way that you can explore an API without having to go kind of run a script. So it, it's, it's, it's a great way to interact with uh, API in Python. So the next thing I'll do is let's go to the web browser and we'll go create a uh, network object through there. We do that. And the first thing I'll do is point out a couple of caveats here that are things that you need to be aware of. One thing is up in the corner, you'll notice that it's, it says not secure. And the reason it says not secure is because we have a self-signed certificate in the browser. And it's just warning you that there's no CA that has signed that certificate. So that, that will be a standard thing. We don't yet have the ability to customize that certificate. It will be coming in a future release. So just keep that in mind. You will notice the protocol is HTTPS. So even though it says not secure, that just means it doesn't trust the certificate. It really is HTTPS with a strong cipher. So it's not really something to be terribly concerned about. The other thing to note here is I have a non-standard port here. This is the port for my lab pod. So normally the port is 443. So if you're installing this and don't have a NAT, NAT boundary in the middle, don't worry about that. You would just do HTTPS colon slash slash your host name, and it should just work to get to this. So I, I just wanted to point that out so you're not confused by seeing non-standard stuff here. And the next thing I will do is I will log in. Standard username is admin. Standard password, if you haven't changed it at install time, like if this is the first time you're using the device, is admin123. So what I'll do there is I will click login, which will get me into the UI. You'll see our normal kind of dashboard set up here. And to get into the API Explorer, you need to adjust the URL. And tech API Explorer. That's right. There. And you, you can do it with or without that hash there. Both ways it'll load. And it, this is leveraging, as we've mentioned in some of the other videos, open API spec with the Swagger UI. And what I'll do is I'll scroll down here to network object, as we're going to show you how to create that. And network object. And if you want to create an object, the thing to note here is we've shown you in previous videos how to get a network object. So here we'll drill down into the post method and show an example there. And so this is the response class. What we want to do is the request. And you'll notice here is the request. And you can see the content types here is application JSON. So what we'll do here is you'll notice on this side, you see example value and model as the two versions. So you can see all the fields allowed. What, and if you want to pre-populate this, this little window here with sample JSON, what you can do is click here. That pre-populates JSON over here that you can then 
fill in to create your object, which makes it easy. One of the things to note here is several of these fields aren't actually needed because it, it populates the entire template of every possible field. Not all those are actually applicable in the post call. So what I'm going to do first is just clear out a couple of those fields and I'll walk you through what those are that we need to go clean up. So the first one is in the case of a create, there's this version field and the version field is for updates to ensure that two updates don't clobber each other. So when an update comes in, it'll pass the version and that version needs to be the version of the object in the database to detect if someone else made a change in the middle. So I'll clear that out. I'll, I will also, uh, description's optional, so I'm just going to remove that because I don't want to fill in the description. I'll leave the subtype as host, and that, that just means host object versus network object, so there's different types there. And then is system defined is used in a case where you, uh, where it's, where it's uh, an object that we pre-create at install time. It'll be true in that case. In our case, that'll be false, and the default is false, so I'll just remove that. And then ID is not needed in the create because it's allocated by the system. So I'll delete that line. And then, I, so I, I'm left with name, subtype, value, and type. And what I'll do is I'll customize my name. And just because it ends up getting sorted alphabetically, I'm just going to put like AA um, net obj. And then I'll leave host there as the type. And then for the value, um, well, so it's a host, so I'll just put an IP address. Let me just put like all fives to make that simple. And then, so that should be sufficient to go create a host type net, subtype network object. And I'll scroll down here, I'll click try it out. One of the things you'll notice here in the API Explorer, so in the curl syntax here, as I've mentioned in some of the other videos, it doesn't put the token here. So this curl, you, you would need to modify it and put the bearer token if you actually wanted it to work in curl, but otherwise it's correct. It shows the content type, the accept type, and then all of the, the kind of payload here you'll see in the curly braces is, is the JSON contents encoded there. You'll see the name, subtype, value, and type. You can see the full request URL here. Uh, so if, if you were to go try to replicate this in uh, let's see, you're, write, you're writing code and you want to embed the URL. You can see the full URL there. And then you can see the response body here. And some of the, the things to note, because you know that I, I removed some of these fields when I originally did the post. And in, in this case, you'll see that they're now filled in because it, when, when you post the server, it will bounce back the populated objects. So you'll see version populated. This is a pretty much a random string that just acts to detect conflicts. So think of it kind of like a hash or a, or a rand. Uh, you'll see the name, the description's null, I didn't populate it, it's optional. Is system defined as false because this is something that I as a user created in the system? And then you'll see the ID which was allocated by the system and then the type which always needs to be network object and then you'll see links. So links is a self-reference back to the object I just created and you'll notice the ID value for the created object there. So that, that pretty much is it. You can also see down below there's the so, Jared, is there a documentation which shows which which are my required so if, uh, uh, so required uh, um, parameters I have to provide here? It's the best. That's a good question. The best way to find that is if you scroll here to the the request parameters. What you can do is go to model here and look through, and all those fields should should basically tell you that uh, there may some of these may not perfectly tell you, but you can. You can see all the fields, their descriptions, the enum values of what's allowed, like host is right there, which I used. Is system defined? Um, it tells you false is the default, which implies it's optional. So you can skip that. And then ID, I, I guess, I'm not sure if it tells you it's optional here, but they're, they're all defined. Okay. So that, and the other thing that you can do is, I mean, another way you can debug stuff like this is you can also use the UI and watch how it calls the REST API in some cases like this to see what it populates. But the, the, the right place to look is the API Explorer. And we're constantly working on making that documentation more, more complete. Okay. So that, yeah, that's the right place to look there. So we had, go back to the re response code tells you it was successful and then you can see response headers, which honestly aren't, aren't as interesting. So that the next thing that we'll cut over to is showing you 
if I want to do this same thing in Python, how would it look? And, and again, as, as we started in the other video showing you how to use Bravado, I'm going to extend that. I won't reiterate some of the, the token gathering uh, exercise there, but we'll, we'll jump into, okay, if, if I have a Bravado client, what do I do? So let me do that. So Bravado is just a, a, a Python package which I can import using pip or? Yes, great, okay. great question. So that, that it's an open source Python package. You can install it with pip. So okay. what, what I used is Python 3 and I did like a pip3 install Bravado and, and you get that. So it's, it's okay. a very simple process. It, I mean, as long as you get Python and pip, pip yeah. there to, to get that installed and running. So what I'll do now is I'll launch IPython and, and I have this alias to IPython3 is what it's really running here. And I will import, so I have a sample client that what it, what it does is it will, it will, it will, it will, it will kind of create a connection shell, log in uh, when I tell it to log in, and then I'll get a Bravado client. So let me just quickly do that. So I think what Jared is showing here is, is that simple client is something which Jared wrote. It's yeah. kind of like a helper function for him. It has few helper functions for him, and in, from there, he's actually importing a FTD client. Yes, and, and this is code that we will have equivalent sample code out on DevNet, yeah. because we want to walk you through how to do these same kind of exercises out there, so that'll be the place to refer to get these, these samples. Yeah. So here, I'll, 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 I won't show you the code in, in this exercise, but we'll show you kind of what you'd have to do given, given this sample code. Yeah. And, and you, can, uh, you can actually go to um, developers.cisco.com learning labs, and you can find learning labs on this as well. So now what I'm going to do is, so I created my client. I told it the address is ftd.cisco.com, and I'm going to tell it to log in. And actually, one thing to note, which I showed a, a bit in the previous uh, video, was that you can do this tab completion. So it'll tell you I can do login or I can do login custom. I'll just do a basic login because we're going to do a quick exercise here. I'll see the debug of what the header was, what the payload was. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my Bravado client. So I'm going to call that B client. And I have a little helper method called get client that basically takes the, the, the session that I've created, passes that into this Swagger client, which is the Bravado client, and instantiates a kind of Bravado shell SDK that I can program against. Okay, so now we have that client. And what I can do is, if I look at network object, you'll, I mean, you'll see, in this case, we want to show how to create a network object. So there's this method, add network object. So that's what we want to call. And one of the things that you have to kind of learn with Bravado, there's some, some kind of practices you have, is the first you need to create an instance of a network object that I can pass to that. So, what I'm so all these objects are showing up because um, FTD or NGFW API has published uh, Open API spec, yes. and that spec is actually being imported by Bravado client to actually populate all this, which you are seeing on the screen. Exactly, yeah. it, it, it ingests this NGFW.json file, which is in the sample code that it, well, it, it pulls it in actually from my device and creates this API, and because it knows what a network object is and it knows the HTTP methods that you can perform against a network object, and that's how it builds this this kind of SDK. Dynamic. So, you in your um, the the code you started with, where you have imported the FTD client for, in that you have actually put that URL to fetch that JSON correct, for the correct. Open API spec. Okay. Yep, yep. So DevNet will definitely be the place to go to see see exactly how that's done. Okay. So here, what I'm going to do is there's a method called get model, and what get model does is it gives you kind of the raw model that you need to then populate the fields. And this is a very similar pattern to pretty much building the JSON. So when I went into the API Explorer and kind of graphically did this, I had to take the JSON and remove those fields and just get the, the kind of four fields I had to have populated. So here I'm mimicking that exercise. And what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna call this network object so I'm getting kind of an instance of that, or I'm, I'm getting the class, really, is kind of what this is. And then I'm going to say my obj, to, this will be my, my handle that, or my variable that I assign it to, and then I will instantiate network object. I will say name equals, I think last time I called it AA, maybe I'll call it AAA this time, or wait. 
name equals let's call it a net object two, and then we'll say subtype equals host. It's all in all in caps, and then we'll say type because you have to give it the object type is network object, and then the last thing you have to provide is the value. I think last time I did it all fives, maybe I'll do it all sevens this time. So here you're kind of like building up your JSON. Yeah, I mean, pretty much th this builds up a wrapper that will then generate the JSON to post. Okay. Yeah, it's materially what's happening here. So I'll do this, and th that will, like, click enter. That just made my obj, this variable, have this. And what I'll then do is I take my, my Bravado client, and I'll do network object dot add network object and it auto completes which is very handy and then you say body equals my obj for that instance and that that makes that the request body is is pretty much the json that gets expanded from that mm -hmm. is what it'll do and it knows the url just as, as as an artifact of going under network object it's able to construct the url it knows the content types and all of that from open api spec so we'll do that, and what you have to always put on the end, even in the case of a post or a put, is you have to do this results call, and that'll cause it to execute the HTTP future. And what we'll do is it actually returns the object, I believe. Um, and I'll, I'll just put something called obj in case we want to take a quick look at that. So that ran, and if I go look at obj, I could probably just do that, or let me make it a little more viewable we'll look at the internal dictionary because it's a little prettier here. And what, what you can see is, okay, I got my name. I didn't put a description, which is fine. It's optional. I see the ID value. So internally, it allocated this giant kind of UUID value, which is the unique identifier for this object in the database. We see the type, which is network object. You see the subtype that is host. You see the value. It's not system defined, which is correct. And you see the unique link to go fetch that object with the UUID on the end there. So, I mean, that, that pretty much is all it takes to go create an object in the system. And if we flip back just quickly to look at the UI, we should see both of these objects there. And I'll just tweak the URL. And I'll go to objects, networks, AAA net obj2 and AAA net obj. So they both showed on the top. So you can see that what I just did in the API Explorer did, and in Python code, both are now reflected in the UI because they actually did live updates on this system. So that kind of goes to show that this, well, A, it's an effective way to make a change, but B, it actually does make a change. It's not just a little scratch pad. Scratch pad. So it's, it's, it's a way that if, if you want to do automation, these are definitely viable ways especially with Python, if you want to write a script to do things, it's a great way to get things done. So that's all I had. Veer, do you have any questions? No, this is amazing. And I think um, uh, especially the, the most powerful thing which I take away from here is the, the spec which is available, the open API spec which is available. And because of the tool, rich tool chain which comes with it, uh, like Bravado, we can quickly create uh, um, very nice uh, API clients. So thank you, Jared, for your time. And thank you all for watching. And go to, go to DevNet to go look at learning labs and to use the sandbox to try this out yourself. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely.